sitting next to me, Yay. I have Sergio. <laughs> Yay. Because people think they know you because they see you on television every day. Before I did first dates, I was a anonymous guy. And I met him once when I was 25. I don't need a father figure anymore, I was 25. And that's why I say I'm not like my parents. That cycle is broken. How is it for black people there in the Netherlands? <laughs> I was so devastated that I wasn't able to hold on to that love. But that's what I love about you. I love how honest and open you are. Love yourself, that's the most important thing. You really want to know me? This is me. Wait, allow me to quickly give some context on how I ended up here. You see, two years ago, I moved to the Netherlands to be with my Dutch girlfriend. And in my first few months here, it became almost a nightly ritual to sit on the couch with her family and watch his show called First Dates, a program where people throughout the Netherlands that are looking for love go on a blind date in a restaurant. And beyond the funny date fails and the ability to practice Dutch by watching, what really intrigued me about the program was the host, Sergio Vient. He had lots of charisma, was funny, and to be honest, was black. And always made me think, if I was born and raised in the Netherlands, this is who I'd like to be. I became a big fan, and about a year later, my girlfriend surprised me with tickets to his show that he was doing with Dutch singer and actor Jim Bauckham. The show was great, and after the show, I even got a chance to meet Sergio and snap some photos. And that leads me to today, where... Sitting next to me, Yay. I have Sergio. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow, Sergio, yeah. how are you? Uh, yeah, thank you for having me. No, thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. Really yeah. cool experience, you know. I gave a little context behind, you know, how I got to know you mm -hmm. and, you know, how I kind of, like, got connected with Sergio, the guy on First Days and everything. Yeah. But I'm curious, for people that never heard anything about First Days, never, yeah. you know, seen you on television, for example, my family in California watching this right now, how would you introduce yourself to someone that's, Never heard yeah, of it. If you talk about the, the program, it, it is, um, I think, the first, first program where, in, in reality, uh, people are, are, are dating and that the crew is busy for people who yeah, cannot find love. Yep. Uh, we all need love. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> uh, and it's, it's from, from 18 till the oldest we had was 92. Oh, wow. So that was the range. And, Everybody uh, came, so um, they give us what they like and who they are, yeah. and we try to match them. Yeah. And we are really busy of to find that 100% match. Wow. And um, I was uh, fortunate to host it, and, and yeah, I, I was there for them. Yeah. And that is, uh, uh, I think, a very uh, important thing. Yeah. Uh, that, it, that has to do with hospitality, that has to do with, uh, it's not about me, it's about those persons. I'm just a tool to uh, help them reach their goal. Yeah, yeah. Oh, speaking of tools, yeah. I think you have a really, really great tool here that you yeah. created. This is the book you released last year, correct? Yeah. It was last year. Last year. The yeah. Lethal Volga Sergio is yeah. the love, love, love according, according Sergio. to Sergio. Sergio. Yeah. Not according to Garb or. <laughs> <laughs> Now, yeah. I consider this like the Bible for love. Like, uh, nah, in, a, in, a, in a way, it, before I did first dates, mm -hmm. uh, I was an anonymous guy. Mm -hmm. Once I did first dates, it was really uh, that people are like, oh, Mr. Love, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, all that. So I got a lot of attention. Yeah. And at a certain point, I was really busy, like, oh, I have to buy some groceries. <laughs> Oh, what I'm going to wear, or uh, is it? Is this? So I was busy with the outside world, which I never had to do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. that's why I wrote the book because people thought, uh, "Love according to Sergio." Oh, it's about first dates, or mm -hmm. no? This is really about me of how I see love yeah. and uh, what I experience, and I, I do it with 25 topics. Yeah. Talk about yeah, all the different kinds of love you can experience. Yeah. yeah. Love for your work or for your ex-wife or for your first girlfriend or yeah. for your kids or for your dog. And all those topics had to do with love, but what I experienced. And it, it was really a weight of my shoulder well, to yeah. say, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because people think they know you mm -hmm. because they see you on television every yeah. day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I know him. No, yeah, but yeah, I said, yeah. no, this is me. Wow. This is me, yeah? yeah. <laughs> you really want to know me? 
yeah. <laughs> so that's yeah, that's just, uh, uh, my book. Yeah. For this conversation, what I want to do is like use the different chapters in the book to kind of yeah. like facilitate the conversation going forward. Okay. Um, so <clears throat> I feel like I, I want to start at least you know with the the, the chapters you have related to your parents because mm-hmm. uh, I feel like at least from my understanding that's like the kind of foundation to like what leads to like later on in your life. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. And so first, kind of talk, starting with the love for your father. Mm-hmm. So basically, from my understanding, before you were even born, your father was already gone. Yeah. And I'm curious, like, from an early age, did that already have an impact on you? Or did you, since you were born into that, was it just normal? No, I I wasn't that busy with it Mm. then. Yeah. You're used to it. Mm. Uh, The only thing is what you, uh, when you see your friends, uh, yeah, yeah, they have a father and a mother. Yeah. Uh, And and, and I didn't have that. But it wasn't that I was like, oh, I needed to or I wanted to. Yeah. Uh, So, no, no, for me... The father figure was yeah was not there, and even when I uh, was eleven and I went to uh, foster uh, parents, mm-hmm. uh, it was only a woman, mm-hmm. uh, so only a mother also yeah. there. So throughout my life, there was not a thing like oh I need my my uh, father oh, or the, of I I'm I'm looking for him or or mm-hmm. that no yeah it was more when I. Uh, got older yeah, I got older and got my own kid. That yeah. that you think about those things of yeah. okay, how what kind of father do you want to be, mm-hmm. and uh, of are you the same? Mm-hmm. And the only thing what I missed was the you always need somebody of uh, how how am am I going to be mm-hmm. yeah, to to exactly. know yeah to know uh, uh, what my father looked like oh, or yeah, yeah, do yeah. I look like him mm-hmm. or. Because I didn't, never had a clue. Yeah, and that was the only thing I I was really curious about. Yeah, of uh, okay, uh, does he look the same as me? Yeah, yeah. And not like uh, does he love me or uh, no? That was not the thing. It was more that I need I needed for myself a bit the the picture. And I met him once when I was twenty five. Yeah. And the only thing I could do was I saw him and only I could hold his hand and look at him and and cry wow. and cry because. In a way, the, my picture was fulfilled, yeah. and I didn't need anything more mm-hmm. from him. Yeah. And he even said, "Oh, and I'm gonna be." I, I, I didn't even listen because, for me, it was good. Yeah, yeah. For me, then it's 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 good. Yeah. And, uh, some people cannot uh, relate to that, mm-hmm. but I, I'm 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 very uh, honest in the way I feel and what I think, what I need. Yeah. And that's what I needed. And yeah. yeah no, I don't need a father figure anymore. I was 25. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what are you going to do? Are you going to play catch? Or <laughs> what? Yeah, no, no. I went through my process of, of knowing that he was not there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, that in itself is already, it could be heavy for somebody, you know, not having the father there. But you kind of had the same experience with, with your mother, correct? You, yeah. You want yeah. to talk a little bit about that? What, what exactly happened there? Yeah, she, she wasn't able to, to uh, take care of, um, of us, yeah, also my sister and my, uh, and my brother. Very young, uh, she was 16 when she got my sister, she was 19 when she got me. Mm-hmm. So if I go back when I was 16, yeah, I, yeah uh, life was different. And, uh, what kind of choices can you make? Yeah. Uh, and your own ambition, what do you want? So I'm not mad about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, 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 she had to make her choices. Yeah. And I understand. Not so nice part is, is that it also affected yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is the, that's the, 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 the other side of the coin. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, she wasn't in, in my life and I made, very young age, I already made the choice of like I'm not pursuing uh, something that is not able to give me of what I need. Yeah. And that is, it was a difficult choice, mm-hmm. but in a way also uh, it has to do also with self-love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I can say it now in retrospective, mm-hmm. but that was a choice I made when I was like 10, 11. Yeah. Like, okay, no. <laughs> I'm not going to, it hurts, but yeah, I'm not going to pursue it yeah. uh, or be busy with it. Oh, I need my mom yeah. or I need that. No, I really had the feeling I'm, I'm, yeah, I have to do it. Yeah. Actually, to that point, um, in your book, there's a part where you say, <coughs> I'm going to say this in Dutch. I hope yeah. I say it okay. 
Tok durfde ik de belangrijke vragen niet te stellen, omdat ik bang was voor de antwoorden. Waarom ben je weg gegaan mm-hmm. en heb je me gemist? Mm-hmm. So basically you're saying, you know, you were afraid to ask difficult questions yeah. like why did you leave yeah. and did you miss me? Yeah, because you... because the, 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 um, those questions I cannot answer. Mm-hmm. And if I'm going to ask myself those questions, I am keeping a wound open. Mm-hmm that doesn't have time to heal. Mm. Because if I'm going to ask why, uh, yes, he cannot give me the answer, I cannot give me the, uh, the answer myself, mm-hmm. or the answer will be very negative. Mm-hmm. In uh, was I not good enough? Mm. Or uh, so negative to yourself. Yeah. So uh, the, the question was never asked? I, I didn't want to, yeah. also. Yeah. Because it, it, it is, it, it, what, what is going, to, what is it going to bring me? Yeah. Nothing good. So then I better yeah, go with the situation mm-hmm. it is and yeah, that I don't have to ask why. Yeah. Because I'm going to hurt myself more. Yeah. By asking why. Yeah. And I noticed it with my sister. My sister was always busy uh, to with my mother try to find the answer to the question why. Mm-hmm. Uh, but also busy like love me, yeah. see me, mm-hmm. uh, and I, I never. I've, if she wasn't able to give me what I needed, mm-hmm. so why pursue it? Yeah. Why hurt myself by when the other person is not busy with what I need? Yeah. Yeah. Then there's no use. Then cut it loose. Yeah. 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 So. It, it's hard, but. Yeah, it's for for yourself yeah. to grow and go further. Mm-hmm. Uh, it will hurt either way. Yeah, yeah, uh, that makes sense. Yeah. So I mean, through both of your parents essentially being out of the picture, then eventually, as you mentioned earlier, you went into the foster care, and mm-hmm. that's when you were connected with Mean. That's yeah. that's how you take right. Mean? Yeah, Mean. You yeah. tell me a little bit about Mean and yeah, you know, kind Mean. Of what you mean mean was uh, uh, the the. Um, uh, of of being with my mother and then in a how do you call it uh, in English uh, Kinderhuis uh, 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 child protection yeah child protection home and uh, then we with my mother and then uh, so my my first years were very uh, yeah turbulent mm-hmm. uh, but when I was eleven and I started living with uh, Mean mm-hmm. there was there was uh, stability there was love. There was uh, attention. Mm-hmm. It was no, no stress. No. So was that strange to feel that in that moment? Um, like, well, this is what normal feels like. No, no, I, I wasn't busy with uh, this. Is how it normal uh, of of uh, seeking for that, but yeah. uh, it was there. Yeah, and I learned from that. It it it, it gave me and and. Uh, in my most important years, when you develop your your social skills, when you develop uh, um, of how you see yourself and how you see others, uh, uh, if you are worthy or not, mm-hmm. in it, uh, those years uh, are when you reaching uh, adolescence. Yeah. It's yeah. Important. And then at that moment, there was for me there was stability, mm. there was love, yeah. there was attention. Yeah. And that, uh, with the baggage I had of not having that, yeah. made me also, I think, in the end, a very balanced man. And that is what Mean did yeah. for me, to give me the love and attention, yeah. even though she was not my mother. Yeah. I'm curious, do you see Mean as a mother? No. No? No, 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 no. No, no, no. I see her as, as a very important person in my life. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, no, I don't see her as my mother. Okay. Yeah. No, yeah, that for some people it's 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 difficult to to understand. Or for maybe <laughs> I'm uh, I'm I'm very the path you take uh, uh, is your path, mm-hmm. and I'm responsible for my path. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't put it in the hands of my mother mm-hmm. to be happy. Mm-hmm. I don't didn't put it in the hands of me mm-hmm. to be happy to no I'm happy with the choices I made yeah and and I'm very grateful that mean was in my life mm-hmm. and 
helped me in a very good direction, mm -hmm. but not as a replacement of the mother. Mm. And, and, and the, for me, the value of the word mother, uh, when you speak with a hundred people and you say mother, yeah. then for people, say, oh yeah, they, they have all kinds of ideas of yeah, yeah. how a mother is. Yeah. I don't have that. Mm. So for me, mother is just a word. <laughs> yes. mm pavement <laughs> or uh, yeah whatever yeah I hope you understand of, yeah, uh, of I, I how I, I, I think about the word mother or father or parents yeah, yeah. I, you kind of alluded to it already but I mean I could imagine considering all these things that happened early on in your childhood the the topic of self-love yeah. that would have been a difficult thing for you to to kind of find for yourself and you actually mentioned in the book there was one point when your first kid was a few years old that you found your, you found you were losing yourself, and that's yeah. when you did a two year trip, uh, yeah. a work trip in Singapore. Yeah, I'm curious what was going on at that time that made you feel that way. I just had uh, Marius, my oldest son. Yeah, and uh, my ex wife and me, we we couldn't make it, make it. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes when you are in love, uh, the other person sometimes you want them to fulfill something you need, mm -hmm. and if the other person also has that. Uh, but you're not on the same page in what the other needs, and we were we were disconnected. Yeah. But that also threw me back to uh, my childhood. Mm -hmm. That I was really like, am I a good father, mm -hmm. or am I the same as my father? Mm -hmm. uh, am I doing the same things as he did? Or yeah. so it really. Pff, I was I was so devastated that I I wasn't able to uh, hold on to that love and 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 raise a kid in a in a way in a normal way mm -hmm. a father and a mother mm -hmm. and that I wasn't able to and and uh, yeah and that 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 really hurt me me deep and that I really had to take the time to to find myself yeah. again. Yeah. And uh, and to take myself out of that equation, to think and and be busy with who am I, mm -hmm. and I did it in in uh, Singapore in a, in a whole totally different environment, and there was no safety net of what I made here in Amsterdam. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I was dependent on my on my own, and uh, when you're dependent on your own, you you really have to yeah. Think about what you want. Yeah. Who are you? And uh, and when I came back, and I, and uh, and I can only see say uh, I'm not my parents because I'm there. Yeah. I'm still there. Yeah. Uh, there's never uh, that I were disconnected with with Marius, with my older son. Yeah. And it was also very nice, even the two years that I was away. But I I told him very good, even though he was young, that it had nothing to do with him. Well, yeah. Really nothing. Yeah. And I said it like a thousand times. Yeah. To even with his small brain of what <laughs> he had, but that he could understand in a way that it had nothing to do with him. Yeah. But with me. Yeah. And that I had to do this to be away. And and it's nice when uh, he's eighteen now, and uh, the feedback you get when they get older. Mm -hmm. That he said, yeah, but. You and Mama were always there. You yeah. were always there for me. Yeah. And sometimes you have to be honest also to yourself to if you are not able to see it straight or good, uh, try to find uh, a way that you are. Because if you cannot take care of yourself, how are you going to take care of a kid? Yeah. It's crazy I have to, to that, be stable. Yeah, it's crazy to say that's literally one of the points I wanted to make is that I feel a lot of times parents, and I'm not a parent yet, but it's just my mm -hmm. observation, I feel have this mindset that it's like I have to sacrifice everything all the time for my kid it, to the point where it's like they're sacrificing too much of themselves. Yeah. But then like now you're doing, in a sense, your kid a disservice because like you're not good all the way yourself. So but how also, can you be but there? also not, uh, if you are in... <laughs> Uh, a bit twisted in like okay I don't know then you're not emotional there and yeah even though I was not physically there 
Marius fell, I'm there. Yeah, yeah. So it's not the matter of time you spend, yeah. but the, on an emotional base, yeah. I'm there. Yeah. He knows he can always. Uh, the first time he had a, he had the first time he had a, a girlfriend. Yeah. Uh, uh, when he was uh, a, a bit younger, and he did it for the first time, he called me immediately. Wow. He said, oh, I did it. <laughs> but for a son to call his father, mm -hmm. that is. Of what you what you want, or uh, of what I really like to have that emotional bond. He knows he can uh, rely on me, yeah. and that is uh, a nice thing. Yeah, I yeah. could imagine that means so much for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And that's why I say I'm not like my parents. I, yeah. I'm a different person, and I learned from that. Yeah, that cycle is broken. Yeah, of like uh, just being away or uh, yeah. not emotionally there. Yeah, I'm there. Yeah, and in total, you have three kids, right? Yeah. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit more about them? Yeah, I have uh, one of 18 and uh, mm -hmm. twins of uh, eight. Yeah. I'm not with their mother also. Uh, yeah, l love is a difficult thing. <laughs> <laughs> we all go to phases. and uh, But still, I'm uh, for uh, the three of them, I'm, I'm there. And how would you describe the impact that your kids have had on your life? It, it enriches uh, my life. It, uh, it made me... Uh, also, uh, sometimes really crazy, like, oh, wow, <sighs> it's heavy, it's heavy. And when people are there, uh, you don't have kids yet? No, no. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, I, I always, uh, I said it one time in an interview also, if, if your relationship is not stable mm -hmm. and you have kids, mm -hmm. uh, it's guaranteed a divorce. <laughs> mm -hmm. If, if you're not stable to, uh, already in your relationship and you're not able to discuss the things that, that uh, is thrown in front of your feet, yeah. uh, then having a kid, it, it, especially the first years, it will consume you. Yeah. Well, that's what I love about you. I love how honest and open you are about these kind of things. I feel yeah, a lot of people try to sugarcoat. No, no, no. It, it, it's what I experience, yeah. and uh, and 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 it says nothing that that uh, I love my kids to death. I would do everything for them. But yeah, yeah the the truth is there, I, yeah. and also, yeah, sometimes you cannot cannot make it. Uh, and if you're yeah, like I said, if your relationship is not stable, mm -hmm. then yeah, it is very very difficult. Yeah. Now, I mean, your kids, you know, they know you as father, but us on the outside. You know, yeah. we, you know, you know, you as the guy on television or the guy from First Date. Mm -hmm. I'm curious if you kind of walk me along your career journey, like what led up to First Date. When I was 17, I, I went to Sittard. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, in the in the south of Holland mm -hmm. to do uh, a sport education mm -hmm. because when I was 17, I was a Dutch champion uh, long jump. Yeah, yeah. So I was very athletic, and uh, that was my uh, my uh, my goal. Uh. Uh, I trained six days a week, and I was, it was only sports, uh. only sports, uh, from the time I was with uh, with me. Yeah. And then I lived on my own in Sittard, and I had to uh, work also uh, besides uh, studying. Yeah. And I, my first job was in a bar in Sittard. And man, the world opened. Yeah. <laughs> like, what is this? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so for me it was like a, a different part, like uh, going out, drinking, uh, smoking uh, cigarettes, yeah. Uh, yeah, living the life. Yeah. So that that was my first uh, first uh, job uh, within the food and beverage uh, industry, and mm. uh, and. Yeah, I, I kind of liked it. Mm -hmm. So it went from sports uh, working to like... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and in 1999, I started working at the supper club. Okay. And uh, most people, if they know Amsterdam, yeah. uh, uh, yeah. supper club was the place to be yeah. in Amsterdam. Uh, we were full every day. Wow. And uh, I did that until 2008, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, also went to to uh, Singapore to open it uh, over there. Mm -hmm. I worked also in Singapore for uh, Timber. Then I came back to Amsterdam to do uh, Little Buddha to open up Little Buddha here on the 
Leitzer Square. Mm -hmm. I was the, the uh, food and beverage manager of uh, uh, the Bulldog, also well known all over the world. So I, I made my, uh, like my career uh, within the food and beverage uh, industry. Yeah. I actually have a friend that worked for you at one yeah. point. I forget exactly where he said it, was. it might have been Super Club, my friend Dior. I don't know if the Dior. name rings a bell. No, no. Dior. No. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Dior. Yeah, he worked at Supper Club. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He I thought it was but He club, worked right? in the, uh, f I think also in the office later on. Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, th that, I yeah. think he, he worked also in the bar, but mm. later on he also went to uh, the office. But oh. then I, uh, yeah, just before I went to uh, Singapore. I think. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Dior, here. Dior, yeah. Shout out to you, Dior. <laughs> 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 now, so, I mean, you, now you're known throughout the Netherlands, you know, as, yeah. you know, that, that face of first date. Um, but I'm kind of curious, you know, your Surinamese background, you know, your yeah. parents, at least I should say, but born and raised in the Netherlands. Yeah. What's your connection that you have with Suriname, if any? Mm -hmm. And also, what's yeah. the connection that you feel with the Netherlands? Uh, the, the connection with the Netherlands is very strong. Mm -hmm. uh, I, uh, I lived here, uh, I'm now 52, uh, born and raised in Amsterdam. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, the connection is, is, is very, very big. Yeah. Uh, the connection with Suriname is, is a bit starting. Uh, two years ago, my, my sister died. And uh, like I said, she was always busy with the family and with my mother and with my father and yeah. all those things. Uh, and I was always like, I don't want to know. If I want to know anything, I can ask my sister. Yeah. But I didn't want to know. So yeah, yeah, yeah. for me, it was all all good. Yeah. And a uh, year, year later, my mother died, which I don't had, didn't have uh, any connection with. Yeah. But I flew to Suriname mm -hmm. to arrange her uh, cremation. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people thought like, oh, yeah, he's never going to come or whatever. But I'm like, it had nothing to do that I didn't love my mother. Yeah, yeah. I loved her. Mm -hmm. I didn't agree with the choices she made. Yeah. And it's a different thing. Yeah. And as an individual, I have the choice. What brings a lot of negativity, I have the choice to say no. Mm -hmm. But that, that also has to do with love. Yeah. Uh, do what you want to do. Yeah. I'm not judgmental, but not for me. Yeah. And a lot of people are like, oh, you cannot do that. <laughs> no, it's my life. So, But I was there and I arranged everything. Wow. And also an aunt of my mother, who is uh, 86. Mm -hmm. uh, and she helped me also a lot. And within that, that, that period I was there, within a week uh, to arrange all those things, um, I found uh, that aunt, like a pearl, yeah, yeah. within a very sad uh, period of time, and yeah. I didn't know her. Yeah. And those things combined really made me also think about my kids. Uh, the, the, my twins, they think uh, the world started with me mm. because I had nothing with my family. Yeah. I couldn't say, oh, that's grandma, or that is your nephew, or that is nothing. Yeah. So that, that really, uh, now I'm 52, I'm, I'm really open of, yeah exploring that yeah it's like uh, you know the trivia yeah, that yeah. game yeah, yeah 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 so all my things are filled yeah yeah but there's only one little dice it's not mandatory mm -hmm. i can still play the game yeah. without that little thing but it will make me greater mm -hmm. and better yeah. if i do yeah because i said all those years no i don't want anything to do with it yeah and now I really feel I'm emotionally so strong. And I noticed that uh, last year when I did the cremation of my mother, mm -hmm. that there's nothing that of what I'm going to find out or what, uh, uh, who I'm going to meet or whatever that will uh, break me emotionally. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so Suriname is now, uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. I'm Becoming a little bit more part of your life yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But the Netherlands already, like you said, are, you already have a deep connection yeah. with the Netherlands. Yeah. Now, to that point, I often get questions from people back home, like, yeah. how is it for black people there in the Netherlands? Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, just to be frank, like in the U.S., race relations and all that, it's a, yeah. it's a really tough topic, you know. There's a really it bad is. history with that in our country. Um, obviously, in the Netherlands, they have their history, too, with the slave trade and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. But in terms of modern-day society in the Netherlands, 
I mean, I could get my opinion based off of like my two years here, yeah. and like personally, like I haven't had any problems. It seems perfectly mm -hmm. fine. But that's someone that's only been here for two years. I'm yeah. curious from your perspective, someone born and raised here, uh, as a black guy. What's yeah. your experience? My a, my experience is is. Uh, uh, is is good and of course I, I experience uh, some racist uh, either comments or, or things but yeah. um, I'm I'm more feeling sorry for the person who says that mm -hmm. like ignorance or whatever yeah I, but I'm not letting that yeah. of that opinion yeah. uh, question myself yeah. of who I am it's like what you mentioned earlier like not letting that negativity in like why yeah yeah. Why would I, why would I do that to myself? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like uh, somebody is throwing a, like a firecracker yeah. to you. But are you going to pick it up? <laughs> ah, he did it. No, you picked it up. <laughs> stupid. Yeah, yeah sorry. I, I, I don't think, say that people are stupid who really feel that. But for me, no, I what you're saying. for me, it's, it's like, yeah, so when I experience and it, it goes too far, then I'm not afraid of saying something yeah. to that person. Yeah. Of like, hey, yeah, if how you think, whatever, it's it's not okay. Yeah. And the rest, yeah. Yeah. I'm just myself. Yeah. Um, this next topic I can imagine is a little difficult to talk about, but you mentioned yeah. already um, a couple of years ago, your, your sister passed yeah. away. Yeah, three or, years ago. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to talk a little bit about who... Describe how she was, yeah. what she meant to your life. Uh, no, yeah, she she was uh, she was the, the 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 female version of me, mm. and um, funny in a way, insecure but also strong. Mm. Yeah, we were different in in approaching setbacks, uh, different in approaching what happened to us, mm. but we respected each other for the choices we made. Mm -hmm. Uh, and and the way we want to pursue it, yeah, yeah. Um, so that yeah, that was really, yeah, somebody who yeah, like I said, it was a part of me. Yeah, yeah. She she was the only one who uh, who really knew me. I just had to look at her, and we know how we feel, yeah. or how we mean it, or what the thing is. And when that falls away, yeah, you don't know what you got till it's gone. Yeah, yeah. That feeling, yeah, yeah, because you you take it for granted. Yeah, it was really suddenly. It was yeah. really like I was on the set at uh, first dates, and her son called me like, uh, "My mom is in the hospital with a trauma helicopter." And I'm like, huh, what? Oh. And she had a like a tia or a, a hersen and Yeah, uh, blood blood clot. Correct? Yeah, 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 in the in her spine. So the the choice was really, if she was going to make it, then she would be like a, a plant. Wow. Yeah, but that is not my sister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My sister loved to dance, liked the music, loved everything. Yeah. And uh, luckily, uh, their kids also knew it, and I said, no. Nah. Then. Wow. We have to. Uh, yeah, and I was there until uh, till the end. Wow. So pulled the plug, and I was. Whoosh. Wow. Talk to her a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, that was really um, tough. Yeah. And still, I think of her, uh, in a way, every day, or uh, I'm busy with it. And that is something that has to heal. Yeah. And probably we will never heal. Yeah, yeah. In a way. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. But it, it, it also reminds me of. I be be blessed with with uh, the days you have, and mm -hmm. never forget the people who mean a lot to you. Mm -hmm. To say it to them, mm -hmm. to let them know. Yeah. And sometimes you don't get it back, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Just say it. Just say it. Yeah. How you feel it, and that is very important. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I 100 percent agree. Um, and I'm curious because you mentioned already kind of the different approaches you guys take in. Mm -hmm. For example, she was very into finding out more of you guys' family history yeah. and you know reaching out and asking those questions. Why was that? Why was she? Yeah, she more? she she was really looking for acknowledgement that she exists and and the love that she needed. Mm -hmm. uh, and in a way, uh, she had in the end a very good relationship with my mother. Mm. 
uh, she had uh, talked also with my father. So she found her way well, yeah. of dealing, but it, it cost her a lot yeah. all those years yeah. of pain and heartache and, and all those things. Yeah. And yeah, I also had my heartache, but uh, I wasn't busy with it. So for me, I had my cries, and even though when I was in, in Suriname of cremating my mother, I was emotionally stable. Yeah. Because I lost her many, many, many years ago mm. already. Wow. So, yeah, so it's a different approach, but for me, I also was all good. Yeah. And my sister in the end also, but yeah, she she took f much more punches emotionally than I did yeah. in that in that way. Yeah. And uh, yeah, but yeah, she she was looking for acknowledgement, and and I'm I was more like uh, I know who I am, and more with myself. Yeah. Uh, I think for anyone that's watching this, that's only seen you on first dates and mm -hmm. never learn more about your story at all they would probably be surprised to see all that you've gone through and yeah but uh, but uh, all the all the experience uh, i i had makes me who i am now yeah in a way it's what you see is what you get i'm i'm, I'm just sergio of having yeah. my experiences and, and but that in yeah that helps you also help help me also of reading pe uh, people yeah. uh, when i was younger i was I, I think there the sixth sense uh, started uh, because you can say you love me, mm -hmm. but your actions are different. different yeah. So uh, I'm very keen on what people say, how they move, how they do. What, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that is in a way it became uh, my profession uh, within the food and beverage, mm -hmm. and uh, later on with first aids. Yeah. But that I can really, in a way, read, read people. people. And already been know like okay this person is like that that person is like that or yeah yeah so yeah well. in a way from uh, bad things uh, nice flowers can grow. <laughs> 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 uh, I I thought like you kind of answered it there, but I want to ask you like just directly, what advice would you give to someone that's like dealing with all these scars that they have like because you have a chapter in your book called Love for yeah. Your Scars. Yeah. What advice would you give for someone to? deal with those scars and overcome those scars the way that you yeah for, yeah it's life. it's it's a it's a personal uh, thing and my my way was really uh, a very at a very young age already that i uh, cut the ties mm -hmm. for me it was really um i don't i don't know where i'm going mm -hmm. i don't know where this leads me mm -hmm. but what i do know is that this I don't want anymore. Yeah, yeah. It's already fifty percent of your choice, eh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Then I rather go into the unknown of what I don't know, mm -hmm. than staying in a thing I know is going to break me or, or emotionally uh, scar me more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a choice I made very at a very young age, and that I think in a way that is when people are, are scarred. It, Ask yourself of what, what exactly do you do you need or want, and be honest to yourself, mm -hmm. really honest. Mm -hmm. and, and like my sister made her own part that that she really needed to hear that she was valuable mm -hmm. from my mother or for my father. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't need it because I, I took another part of uh, being very good in my sports. Mm -hmm. And also that people said I'm very valuable, mm. and I also feel felt that I was valuable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So try to find out what what it is that that still holds you back. Yeah, yeah. And but yeah, love, love yourself. Yeah, that's the most important thing. And cut things that are very negative energy for you. Mm. It may hurt, but you in the end you will feel better. Mm. Well, you can cry. I cried a lot when I was younger, mm -hmm. uh, but not like I felt abandoned, no, but of losing uh, a, a part. So I had my share, mm -hmm. and yeah, it only made me stronger yeah. for choosing for myself. Yeah.
I think that answer would be a lot of value for a yeah, lot no, of I people. Hope so. I hope so. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the last chapter in your book I want to cover is love for yeah. life. And yeah. then on like a really positive note. So, what things in life is Sergio like? This is what makes me love life. What are the things in life that you know just makes you feel so blessed and appreciative right now? I like the 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 positive side of love. I of love also, but also of life. Um, I like the to see the humor mm. in things. Mm. I like to laugh. I like to have the the company with friends and that you can just enjoy. Yeah. And I, I think it's key to yeah to embrace those things. Yeah. Uh, I'm more aware uh, uh, of of saying to people that I really like to to mention that. Mm -hmm. uh, don't don't be afraid to to. I'm not afraid anymore to uh, open my heart and mm -hmm. to show who I am. Mm -hmm. That yeah, love for life is just to the fullest. Yeah. I think yeah, wow. enjoy when you can. Yeah, and really do it. Yeah. Yeah. I hundred percent agree. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm trying to do every day <laughs> yeah, very in my good. life. Kunita Vaughn. Vaughn. Yeah. Yeah. At one last part of this yeah. conversation, I'm gonna call this like rapid questions, kinda of like a little okay. speed round. Mark, what the natal ones doing? Okay, hell good. Lots of stuck in the natal ones. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> uh eerste, what is your grootste camera fault? My grootste camera fault? Yeah. Och jeetje, uh, <laughs> volgens mij ben ik wel eens gestruikeld of zo. Ja, volgens mij wel, maar ja, dan wordt het uh, niet alles is live, uh, maar of dat knippen ze eruit. Ja, maar ja, ik ben ja. wel eens gestruikeld bij, uh, bij een camera, ja. Oh, serieus? Dat ik bij mijn desk kwam en... Oh, <laughs> ja, ja, ja. Nou, well, grappig. Ja. Ja. <laughs> Wie is jouw held? Wie is mijn held? Klinkt misschien heel stom, maar... Ik, uh, ik zie mijn held uh, in de spiegel elke dag. Wauw. Ik vind dat super leuk. Ja. Ja, dat is perfect. Al zo. Dat is perfect. Ja. Wat is jouw verborgen talent? Ik hoop dat ik dat woord oké. Ja, wat mijn verborgen talent is. Ja. Yeah. Uh, nee, ik heb geen. geen uh, ik, ik, ik denk dat het mijn verborgen talent zingen is, maar dat is het niet. Denk ik. Uh, ik denk je hebt. <laughs> Jij hebt het stil voor zingen, ik, nee, ik, ik kan het wel horen. Nee, 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 zelfs met, met, met onze show te, uh, tour, hè, dat oh, op het ja, laatst ja. zing ik toch? Ja. Ja, 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 ja. Maar Jim zegt altijd, zeg je al, dat je elke keer de wrong key pakt. <laughs> <laughs> met, met overgave, ja. maar helemaal in de wrong key ja, van ja. waar de orkest op speelt. Dus, dus ja, ik heb er geen... Dus hij was heel, heel eerlijk met jou. Ja. <laughs> waar ga jij het liefst heen op een eerste date? Uh, het liefst uh, of een, uh, een film. Leuk. Een film, dat, hè, dat kan echt wel gewoon een beetje zeggen wat zijn je interesses en wat ja. vind je leuk. Ja. Uh, en ook gewoon uh, met, met een uh, diner. Ja, lekker. Ja. ja. Wat is jouw go-to karaoke nummer? nummer? <laughs> dat is uh, um, uh, Otis Redding. Sitting on Dog of the Bay. Dat is een mooie, yeah. een mooie liedje. Oké, okay, leuk. Wat is jouw je favoriet citaat? Ik weet niet of ik dat ook goed Mijn favoriete citaat? Ja. Nou, 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 nou. Er mag gedanst worden. If you ask my, it doesn't matter if you're in Singapore or ask my friend in Utrecht or... They know. Yeah. And then, no, 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 no. And, oh, okay. So I got the face of it in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In my head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what could happen? What could happen? Uh, what beat the toekomst for Sergio? What beat the toekomst for me? Oh, that I don't know. I hope that the toekomst mij uh, brengt that I gewoon lekker blijf van wie ik ben. Yeah. And uh, that I go wel vanuit. And uh, then zijn het gewoon mooie. Ja, mooie dingen. Ja. ja. Leuk. Laatste vraag. Ja. Er zijn zoveel andere dingen dat je kunt aan het uh, nu aan het doen ja. zijn. Dus ja, wat ik nu ja. aan het doen ben. Ja. ja, ja, precies. Maar je bent hier met mij. En als ik ja. daar eerlijk zijn, ik heb voor YouTube niet een grote, grote kanaal. Dus ik ben heel benieuwd, waarom heb je ja gezegd om dit te doen? Waarom ik uh, ja heb gezegd? Eerst keer dat je, dat je, dat je zag, je, hebt, je had al een keer uh, wat gestuurd van, hé, hey, ik uh, kom uit Amerika en ja. ik ben... Uh, ik ik vind het mooi, je hebt me geholpen met mijn Nederlands yeah. en zo. Um, weet je, ik, ik ben gewoon toegankelijk. En 
Weet je, ik, ik vind het mooi, het is, mooi, het is altijd mooi om een compliment te krijgen. Ja. Maar ik wil ook gewoon weten van, hé, hey, wie ben jij? En uh, ja, daar sta ik gewoon helemaal open voor. En uh, ja. ja, dus daarvoor. Ja. En dat heeft heel veel ook met jou te maken van hoe jij zelf bent. Hè, dat enthousiasme, uh, de openheid. En op het moment dat je dat hebt, daar, daar uh, win je de wereld mee. Oh. Ja. Super lief, super ja. mooi. Ja. Dank je wel, meneer. Ja. Ja. Ik vond het echt een leuk gesprek met jou. Ik ook. Ik hoop je aan. Ja, zeker. Super leuk om te horen. Ah. Yeah. And if you haven't already, you don't have this book in English, right? It's only no, Dutch? No, it's only no. in Dutch. Yeah. But also, uh, um, uh, so luister uh, book. Oh, yeah, e-book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, e-book. No, yeah. but also listening. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry, yeah, audio book. Sorry. Audio book. Yeah, audio book. Yeah. So then, uh, then you can hear my voice. Yeah. <laughs> Really good, in really Dutch. good voice. <laughs> like most of my viewers on my channel are Dutch, so yeah. if you're in the Netherlands and you have not gotten this book, please check this out. As I said already, it's like, in my opinion, the Bible of love. Oh. <laughs> Everything you can think of in terms of like love, he covers yeah. it in his book. Awesome guys, you heard this conversation. And uh, hey, Sergio, thank you so thank much you. for your time today. Thank you. It was awesome. Really? Wow. No.